Hi, this is Mike from Alaska, and today I'm having trouble with my Ford F-250 Super Doozy XLT 6.0 diesel. Problem I'm having is I got stuck on the road, had to get towed here to my house in Alaska, is there's no throttle, there's no pedal. It runs fine, so I'll go through what I found. I hope this helps everybody. It's, it is a 6.0, as you can see. It runs great. Got about 131,000. So let's go into the truck. I'll show you what I found. Okay. We're going to turn the ignition on. I'll try to hold the camera as steady as possible. We'll let it go through its key cycle. I hope you can see those dash lights. Now, if you notice, my check engine light's on. It's been going on and off for a while, and that probably led up to what happened when the part failed. And the wrench light. And if you look at the wrench light in the book, it'll tell you that it's a D-rate mode. And I'll show you what happens. I'm going to start the truck. Runs fine. It's running. Here's the problem. When I press on the accelerator, nothing. All the way to the floor, halfway, a quarter, and absolutely no change. Now when that light comes on, I read some of the forms. It says it, it's called a limp mode. That's when you're towing a heavy object, going up a steep hill. It'll derate the motor to 30 to 35 percent so you don't blow the motor up, give you enough power to get off the road safely, maybe make it home. So, in my diagnostics, this is the pedal. It's an electronic pedal, it doesn't have any cable, it's fly by wire. There's the connector. It wasn't the pedal. I had thought it was the pedal. Maybe I was a little premature in determining the pedal. So what I did was, I went out to AutoZone, and I bought a scanner, a code reader. It's good for most every American car. And that's one of the codes I had. It happens to be an Innova 3100 RS. I've used scanners before. This is great. It's wireless through my Wi-Fi so I can go through my laptop even in my house and it's Bluetooth so I hooked it up to my phone you can monitor everything going down the road if you'd like look at all kinds of parameters and you can get all the stored codes so when I went and looked at the codes look at this look at all these codes I got so I started thinking to myself that's a lot of codes. There was over 12 of them. I said, it can't be that many codes. It's got to be something with the wiring harness or something that connects together with the wiring harness. There's a common denominator why I'm getting all those codes. And if you've been a mechanic and I used to tinker a little bit, you know that if one sensor goes out, you either get a rough running vehicle or you get a vehicle that's sluggish or doesn't feel right or the fuel economy doesn't goes down that's not my case my case is the trucks running but there's absolutely no th pedal no throttle change when I push the pedal okay so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn the truck off now normally that light will come on and cycle off because it checks all the lights this is what I found so all those codes have a common denominator. Miss Ruth, would you hold the camera? Today, my lovely wife is going to be my cameraman. Okay, thank you, Ruth. Where? Right here. So, if you look at this, the key's on. I'm sorry for the buzzing. I've got my meter on 5 volts. Follow my probe. I made sure I have a good ground. Meter works. Got myself a test light. I took out this sensor, 
It's the exhaust back pressure sensor, which goes right below the gas bottle, right here. I took it out because a lot of forms said that that's what was bad. And I decided that I was going to measure the voltage here, and I'm looking for the five volts. And I found out what you pin. I put my little test meter in here because it's a sharp point and it goes in. It's very, very narrow fins, fins, and I don't know. That looks like it's about on a scale of five. That looks like it's about half a volt. Now, if you follow me here, and don't forget, all these sensors come over on this side, Mister. All of these sensors are interconnected. Where do I put my map sensor? Okay, just bear with me. I'm trying to locate my map sensor. Oh, here it is. Tell me. Okay. I'm going to unplug the map sensor, which goes right here on the right side, passing the side, like that, under here. We're going to pull the plug out. I'm not going to lose it this time. And then... This glue's gonna follow me to this side. <laughs> and now we're gonna look for that five volt that's common and that goes to all the sensors. And we had before about a half a volt. And look. Can you see the gauge, Miss Ruth, in the camera? Yes. It's about five volts. Exactly what it's supposed to be. So now what I'm going to do, and you don't have to plug this in. The truck will run without the exhaust back pressure sensor, but I'm going to plug it in. Just let it hang in there for a minute. And then, thank you, Miss Ruth. Then I'm going to go back in the truck. Okay, the light is still on, so I'm going to turn the key off, put the key back on, everything's going to go through its cycle, the light's out. The check engine's still out because the map sensor is not connected and bad, but the wrench light's on. Let's crank it up. Okay, running, it's idling, and let's hit the throttle. Yes, sir. That was the problem. Here we go. I'm going to hit it again. And no wrench light. So if you notice, the light did not go out until I turned the key off and had to reset the computer. So what I'm saying is, in summary... The map sensor here that was connected into the wiring harness was obviously shorted. It brought it down to one volt we had and it made every sensor in the truck go crazy. That's why I had 12 codes. I should have had one code if the sensor went bad. Maybe it was, like I said earlier, running rough. But in this case, Apparently, the map sensor has a short between positive and negative, and that 5 volts, again, goes through the entire harness. Now, it could have been another sensor, and there's several that go along with the um, electronic throttle sensor, the foot pedal, and it's that sensor there. That's a common one to go bad. I started with that one. That one checked okay. So I just found a common point here to put my test meter on where I could see the 5 volts, 
I knew it wasn't five volts, it was one volt, and I just went around, and I was going to unplug all of the sensors associated with this line. I have the schematic. I'll put it in the description. I have to go find it. And then I had a schematic. I looked at the schematic. I'm able to read my sch my schematics. And then when I pulled the map sensor out, I came over here. I measured with my voltmeter. We had five volts. I went in the truck. I turned the key off. I turned the key on. And once I saw that wrench light go out, I knew I had the problem solved. I started it up, and Yahoo, there we go. So um, I ordered it from AutoZone. It was uh, $77, I believe. They had one in stock. And when I go to town next time, I'll pick it up. So there you go. Any questions, I'll include my email. It's flywithmike at yahoo.com, F-L-Y-W-I-T-H-M-I-K-E at yahoo.com. And you can email me, and I'll try to help you as best I can. And I hope I don't forget to include that link in for the schematic, which I got from Power Stroke Diesel Form. I thank them. They had a lot of comments on them. And there was so many things that could have been wrong with this. Anyway, get yourself a scanner. When you see 12 colds, you know that there's something wrong with the power connection. Not, not 12 sensors could be bad at the same time. Anyway, it's Mike from Alaska. My cameraman, Miss Ruth, thank you very much. You guys have a great day. Hope this helped you. Bye.